everybody. My name is Eric Wortham, uh, born and raised here in the city of Philadelphia, educated in the Philadelphia public school system. I attended the high school for creative and performing arts many, many moons ago. Uh, while there, I was a part of the All City Jazz Band. I learned so much uh, about uh, music and just the, 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 the f groundwork and the foundation as to the musician I am today. It started way back then and, and also it started in the place that I'm in right now in Chris's Jazz Cafe where after going to some of my all jazz, all city jazz band uh, rehearsals and conferences, we would come here and hear the, 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 the professionals get it done, right? So I was asked by the Philly Pops to expound upon and talk about the piano's role in the big band and I'm very honored to have been asked to do so. So I'm just going to dive right into it. First thing about this instrument um, or the first thing about any instrument and, and playing in any section is understanding the role that it plays in uh, the section. And the, pian the piano is a, a polyphonic, monophonic, and a percussive instrument. It can play the melody, it can play the harmonies, and it can keep time. So understanding those three components about the instrument, um, for me, it gave me an understanding or a, a great sense of a, a bank as to how I can approach the songs. I could play them, you know, whereas my role could be specifically just to keep the time or to cre uh, keep and create some type of uh, uh, percussive feeling that can il further illuminate the genre or the time period of the piece. Or I can play certain things harmonic to evoke a, a wide variety of different tenses depending on what the song is um, supposed to convey. If it were a bright, happy song, I would play more of a consonant thing. If it was more of a, a moody, emotional song, I'd play more of a dissonant thing. Um, and then comes the melodicism of whether or not you reiterate the theme of the song, which is either played by a vocalist or a soloist, or you play around the theme of the song to create some type of um, secondary melody or third melody. Um, the song that I started off playing is a song called Luck Be a Lady Tonight, right? So th this brings me into the second part of understanding your, your, your role in, the, in any setting, specifically on the piano. Luck Be a Lady Tonight uh, is a song written from a, a song written and it's a part of a musical called Guys and Dolls. Understanding what the song is talking about, the subject matter is another key component to knowing what to play in your section and for your instrument, specifically the piano. Understanding and knowing the history of that song. The song talks about a, a gentleman who wants to win a bet. You know, he's, he, he, he needs all the good luck in the world to win a bet. And hopefully if he wins his bet, he'll be able to have the evening that he desires with the love of his life, right? So for me, um, I'm not a gambling man, you know. However, um, uh, just researching those who, you know, uh, uh, from athletes or those alike that... Uh, are superstitious about winning, there is certain things in terms of optimism, whether it's a rabbit's foot or this, or uh, uh, superstitions with wearing certain articles of clothing. Basically, that person needs positivity around. There's no, n no idea or no moment of doubt can enter into this, this, this mindset of positive thinking. I need to win, I need to win. So, and and hearing this song, or when I got the sheet music for this song, uh, Luck Be A Lady Tonight, most of what I was playing is not on the chart. It was just chord changes uh, per, per measure. Uh, how I interpreted it was, one, understanding uh, and doing the research about the, the song, the song title, and what this protagonist is feeling in the song. And that's, this person needs some luck. This person needs you know, all things upbeat and positive in order to have a chance of accomplishing the, uh, the, the vision that they have for their evening. So, and luck be a lady tonight. In the beginning, there's a rubato section where, and that's the section before the, okay, uh, before the actual doing. It's almost like there's this pep talk in the mirror for the protagonist to get it all together, which is why you have this this rubato section is not in time, it's not the happy dancing part. However, this part still has a, 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 an emotion and a tense that needs to be conveyed. So in the rubato section, there's more of a floaty, floaty nature and a wistful uh, uh, dream type aspect that needs to be per, uh, portrayed from my instrument accompanying the vocalist. Now there are several options I could have taken 
in terms of how to convey that. But for me, the, the, the statement was echoing what the vocalist was singing, stating that melody while providing a cascade of colors that weren't dark and somber, but were still hopeful and rhythmic and, and playful in a way. And that's why, with the melody being, There's a various of ways I could have played that. I could have played that dark. Could have played it that way. It definitely takes on a much different mood. Totally different mood. The mood of my character and the beautiful thing about being an artist, we all get to make and pick and choose and dress up and design our own character. My character is someone who's well aware of, you know, the fact that things can go wrong, but we're not letting that in at all. So my character has far more of a playful attitude about, okay, these things can go wrong, but I'm not even letting that even into my mind. And this, tell me if you can hear this from my character. to the optimism in terms of my progressions and also how I'm coloring the song. So uh, understanding the, the character, understanding the mood and what's trying to be conveyed is a key part. The second part of the song goes into the, the idea of, okay, I'm on my way. I've set my mindset as to who I am today. I'm going to have some luck. Luck going to be a lady for me tonight. I'm going to win. And then the song goes into tempo. And when the song goes into tempo, um, other aspects of the other components of the band are joined in and my role as the first instrument to kind of help set the tone for the idea of my character it takes a back seat to the other instruments that are going to add the, the colors and add more production to the to the set of this person's reality and those are the strings and that's the horns and when they come in they have a very very commanding um, and I, I won't necessarily say commander, they have a very, very distinct uh, role that they play. It's very consistent. Uh, their hits is not as amorphous and imp improvised in nature. It is consistent. It is the framework to which this character is now moving. It is the, it's the street. It's the time of day. It's the stores on the corner. All these things be now become staples. And understanding that these new, these new instruments added in are now staples, now it's very important that I don't interrupt what they're saying because once again, this instrument is a harmonic instrument and a percussive instrument. So I don't want to, and a melodic instrument, so I don't want to harmonically interrupt what's happening on, with the, uh, the other instruments that are now coming in because uh, it's very important how you voice your chords in, when you're playing in a big band setting. What you decide to play can throw off what's being played within the uh, rest of the band and also if you do that incorrectly it will cause a sound that is not in keeping with what's trying to be conveyed and also it could just sound horrible because everyone could be playing this and you could be playing that and the notes together will clash so understanding what's going on harmonically in the big band is a very important part as well uh, growing up what I would do uh, I would I would take the score and I would look at the score and I would play through the score of the, the horn section as well as the strings if they were accompanying us as well. I would play through that just to get an understand of what's happening harmonically in other parts. I wouldn't just leave it to just my own. And I'll also learn the melody as to how the vocalist is seeing, see, reading it and also listening to how the vocalist is phrasing it. And that will become uh, the, the building blocks as to how I'm going to accompany this next uh, segment of the song. So after we get through, uh, and the band comes.
comes in. They have this pretty consistent. So the harmonies in what I'm playing is in keeping with the notes that I know are in the, uh, the other instrumentation. In terms of the rhythms and what, of what I'm playing, they're rhythms that I, can, I know the drums is consistently swinging on certain patterns. So I'm gonna make sure that above all, certain key hits I land with the drums and certain things that I land with the strings and horns. Just to accentuate and accompany what's happening. Nothing taken away melodically because there's also the singer now involved and that's the focal point and we're all accompaniment. And the largest part of the accompaniment is now, you know, the big band and I take my back seat. So one, learning your instrument uh, and learning uh, the components that it, it possesses. Two, researching the song understanding what's going on in the song, what the protagonist is trying to convey, what the song in and of itself is trying to convey. Lock into an aspect of this character that you can relate to and draw that. And when you draw that, do so in not interfering with the roles in which other instruments and other instrumentation has to play within the song. The way you do that is by learning the other parts as well. The, um, I like to use mathematics and equations to help figure out most of life's situations. When one is on stage doing a theater play, it's one thing to learn their own lines, but understanding the lines of everyone else on stage helps the, uh, the actor understand what role they are to play, how they are to have certain inflections when responding to certain things uh, that are being stated, or uh, what, whether the question is a, a pertinent question or a question that is uh, silly. All these things are dictated by other things that are happening. So reading and understanding what's going on in other instruments is a very integral part, uh, it's a third integral part, I would say, to playing the perfect role or playing a proper role on the bandstand. Uh, how, do you, how does one practice and how one practice is another very, very important part. Um, this is an art form, jazz is an art form that is uh, the, I guess one of the key components when ever asked about it or when you hear most talk about it is it's improvisational nature. What you don't want to do, and what I won't say don't want to do, what I would stress veering away from is practicing to the point of rehearsal, to, where, to the point where uh, you're, you, you've developed a part that you want to play that you can't or you don't know how to uh, uh, be free from. If any, you want to practice things, you want to have an understanding about the piece of music that allows you to explore uh, uh, every time you sit to play the piece. You don't want to be locked into a harmonic or a technical or a theoretical way of playing the song. You want to feel the essence of what the song is. You want to feel the essence of the music and the character, the way every time you play it, there's a world that you can express um, that's different from the last time, that's true to the moment that you're in. So um, I've had the pleasure in life of working with some of the most incredible uh, musicians and artists of various mediums. And I was very fortunate to work with Seal on his standards record. And Seal is a, 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 a very unique vocalist. Understanding your vocalist and the vocalist phrasing and how the vocalist likes to, uh, 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 um, what harmonies they like to hear to evoke certain emotions is very, very, very key and very important. Um, Music hits us all differently. There's, you, you won't find two people that have the same musical taste. You know, it, all, it, it affects us all very differently. And to understand why, is you have to understand this. Music is waves. It's waves that float through the air. And the configuration of these sonic waves will, will evoke an emotion inside of any and every person. You know, and those emotions are, coincide to what life that we've lived. You know, there are certain progressions that I can play that will move me to tears and will, you, you know, offend someone else. Like, I don't want to hear that. And there's other and vice versa. Understanding what those, those shapes and sounds are for the artists you're working with is very, very, very important also. There are vocalists that I've played for that there are certain uh, uh, harmonic 
progressions that just makes them uh, come to life from... Like progressions that are, that are pastel and that have that type of texture allows them, it opens up a world that they remember. It triggers feelings and emotions um, that uh, creates a certain uh, freedom for them to expound and express that it wouldn't for others. Um, understanding what that world is for your vocalist is very important. So knowing and getting a chance to spend time with and talk to the vocalist that I was working with in, in Seal and understanding that the less notes in the chord, the better for him. You know, the, the, the brighter and the less amount of different tones, the more he could feel to, he could fill up the space. And also, not a lot of melodicism for this vocalist, because that would get in the way of the creative ideas that he's having melodically. So when given this song at, to, to play and given the chart, there was, once again, there was not a lot of anything on the chart. It was just chords chords, 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 and I had to learn through rehearsing and through feeling it out with my artists what are the best things that can be played to allow uh, him to really sing his best and really lock into the character that he wants to express. So the chord changes started like this. That's what was just written in terms of chord changes. That's all that was there. Now, mind you, uh, I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, uh, interpreting those chord changes. I did the best that I could in terms of making them connect and sound real. However, there was no melodicism. There was no connection to be made um, or, or written in for me to play to accompany what my vocalist was actually singing. That came from listening. And through listening, and listening to the phrasing, listening to uh, uh, not, on, not only just the phrasing, the tense, and the flow in which he was singing, and also the way in which the melody was, was uh, the, the notes that are in the melody, where they were leading me to, what message they were trying to get me to say, or get the, uh, the, uh, get the audience to understand, that led me to my performance of the song. Hey, 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 hey. They call you Lady Luck But there is room for doubt At times you have the very unladylike way of running out You're on the stage with me The pickings have been lush and yet, before the evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your matter. You might refuse to stay. And so the best that I can do is pray. Begin with 
gentleman see how nice a girl you can be. I know the way you treat and all the guys you've been with. Don't be a lady with me. The certain tools you can use as a musician that will you'll always need in life. Uh, they, they never get old. These are cornerstone tools. Transcribing is one of those things. If you're so lucky as to be given a piece of music that has been performed by uh, other greats or other musicians that you aspire to sound like, great rule of thumb is listen to how they perform the song. You know, uh, there's imitation and uh, emulation is, is a, is a, is a it's a component and a stage in every developing artist's life. Every, everyone starts off wanting to sound like, wanting to act like, wanting to be like someone else until you find your sound. So if there's recordings of the, a song that you're gonna play, listen to as many of them as possible. And who knows, maybe there's one thing inside a performance, or maybe there's a lot of things inside a performance, but there will be something there that you may wanna add to your lexicon and add to who you are as a performer. And that's where transcribing comes into place. Listen to it, you sit and you write it down, write down what you're hearing, go to your instrument and you work it out. And you add it in, you, you, you let, allow it to get inside of who you are and take shape and, and you know. Uh, transcribing is a very integral part of it. Sight reading is a skill that, you know, transcends just the big band stage. Sight reading is uh, a very important tool to have for this reason. And, uh, the thing that made sight reading very important to me had nothing to do with uh, music. It was just the analogy of what being able to read, period, means. It means that you don't have to wait for someone to educate you. You can educate yourself. If you wanted to learn about any of the maths or sciences, you can go to a library and pick up a book, and if you're able to read, you can educate yourself. Same thing with music. If you are able to sight read music, you don't have to wait for... Although I would, I, was, I would always endorse having a, an instructor, but you don't have to wait for someone to instruct you on how to play Debussy. You can go to the library, you can order his music, and you can learn it and read it yourself. You don't ever have to be um, um, bound by someone else to, in, uh, to uh, teach you. So sight reading is an invaluable skill. Uh, there's been many of performances and many of gigs and jobs that if I weren't able to sight read, it would be impossible. And that's my perspective. That's some of the things I've known, I've learned. Uh, I can talk about this topic forever and ever and ever. Hopefully some of the things I've said, or at least one of the things I've said, is, have been uh, transformative and informative. I uh, hope to see you around someday on the bandstand or you know, just in life and so just say hello. I'm pretty approachable and humble. And uh, thank you once again.